Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. Today we are going to be going over the units of output method of depreciating fixed assets. Now the main thing to keep in mind here is that it doesn't differ too much from straight line depreciation. The major difference here is that we are focused on a driver such as miles or hours instead of a uh, strict estimate useful life in years. So there will be some differences from year to year using the units of output method. So let's take a look at the formula first. So the formula for units of output is cost minus residual value divided by estimated useful life, not in years, but whatever the driver is. In this case, our driver is miles. And once you get that result, you times it by the usage for that year. So in this case, miles used during the year. So let's take a look at what we have here. A truck was purchased on January 1st. Uh, for the first year for $450,000. The truck has a residual value of $50,000 and is expected to have a useful life of 100,000 miles. Also, the truck will be used for 20,000 miles in year one. It was used for 35,000 in year two, 30,000 miles in year three, 10,000 miles in year four, and 15,000 miles in year five. And yes, all of that information is relevant. So let's start by just finding the depreciation per mile. So let's use this first part of the formula. We have been given our cost, 450,000 minus our residual value of 50,000, and we have been given our estimated useful life in the driver, which is 100,000 miles. So once we plug that into our calculator, which I'll show you the actual calculation, it gives us a depreciation cost of $4 per mile. So we are going to use that to find out how much depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation shown and so forth we have for each year. So we're not done with just the $4. We can't just put that into our depreciation expense because as you can see, there's a second part of this. We have to multiply it by the usage for each year. So for our first one, we have $4 and then we need to multiply that by how many miles we use during that particular year. So in this case, we use 20,000 miles. So if we multiply that, we find that our depreciation expense for the first year is $80,000. <clears> and <throat> now moving on to accumulated depreciation, just like how we did in straight line, our accumulated depreciation builds up all of the depreciation we've done so far. So, so far we only have one year, so we've only depreciated it by 80,000. So that brings us right to 80,000 in the accumulated depreciation. Now here's another important formula that you must know for depreciation. Book value will always be equal to cost minus the accumulated depreciation. So we have $450,000 and we have accumulated depreciation of 80,000. So that gives us a book value at the end of year one of 370,000. So fast forward to year two, this $4 is not going to change. So it's going to be $4 per mile during the life of the asset unless there is a change in estimate. However, we need some new information for year two regarding usage. So in this case, they use 35,000 miles in year two. So we have $4 times the 35,000 miles that it was used. So in this case, now we have depreciation expense of 140,000. So it's definitely building on itself. Now for accumulated depreciation, keep in mind this is accumulating, it's building on itself. So we had 80,000, we're adding 140,000 to it. So now we have 220,000 accumulated depreciation. It's building on. And your formula for book value doesn't change. 450,000 minus accumulated depreciation. So we have a new number for that balance. So now we have a 230,000 book value. Okay, so let's move on to the next year. The next year we still have $4 per mile. And now for year three, we have 30,000 miles that we have to include in our calculation. So our depreciation expense is the $4 times the 30,000 miles. That gives us 120,000 depreciation. Our accumulated depreciation is building. We started the year with 220,000. We just added a whole nother 120,000. 
So now we have 340,000 in accumulated depreciation and our book value still cost minus accumulated depreciation. So that's 450,000 minus 340,000. <clears> okay, now for year four. This should start making a lot more sense once you do it a few times. As you can see, we're just doing the same thing pretty much over and over again. We're just changing our miles essentially. So now in year four, we have 10,000 miles. <clears throat> That gives us depreciation expense of $4 times 10,000 miles. Our accumulated depreciation has now increased by $40,000. And our new book value, 450,000 minus accumulated depreciation of 380,000. Now we have a 70,000 book value. So let's go ahead and do year five. This one's going to be a little bit interesting. So take a look at what happens here. Now in year five, whoop, we still have $4 per mile and we used 15,000 miles. Well, let's continue to plug that in the way we did for everything else. Okay, so here we have an issue. And this is something you always want to be on the lookout for when you're doing something for more than just the first year or two of its life, especially if it has a shorter year. So as you can see here, our book value is 10,000. Now there's a very important rule when depreciating that our book value can never go below residual value. So in this case, book value has declined beyond residual value. So we have to redo year five so that we do not go past that 50,000. So how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, what we do is we take a look at our last year's ending book value. So we had 70,000 and we know it cannot go beyond residual value. So it can't go below that 50,000. So in order to find out our depreciation, we simply take the 70,000 and we deduct out the 50,000 residual value and we will be able to use that when we are doing our calculation for depreciation. So once we finish that, we see, okay, we can only depreciate $20,000 in year five. We may have just calculated 60,000. That brought us way too far past our book value. So we can only do 20,000. So now our new accumulated depreciation is 400,000. And our new book value is now 450,000 minus 400,000. One second, 450,000 minus 400,000. So now we have 50,000 in our book value. And as you can see, we did not go below residual value. So now we're good to go. So keep in mind, even if you're able to complete these charts and calculate each of these pieces, you still want to be able to pick out the relevant pieces of information to answer your questions. So if the problem asks you to find the depreciation for year three, take a look at the depreciation expense for year three and that'd be $120,000. However, what if it was asking for the ending balance and accumulated depreciation in year three? Now the ending balance and accumulated depreciation at the end of year three would be 340,000. Or what if it was asking for the book value at the end of year three? That would be 110,000. So pay close attention to what they're asking for. Depreciation for the year is going to be your debit depreciation expense. Accumulated depreciation balances are going to be in the accumulated depreciation column and book value is going to be in the book value column. So always be close attention to what they're looking for and remember if you're doing a full life of an asset, pay close attention to make sure that you do not make book value go beyond residual value. Okay, so the next one we are going to take a look at is the double declining method. And then perhaps we'll go ahead and see how to sell or dispose an asset. In the meantime, practice, 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 and happy studying.